my name's uh, Mike Byrne. I play with the Smashing Pumpkins, and I've been a Vader artist since 2010. And I'm here in Boston, Massachusetts at the Orpheum for a killer show tonight. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I started playing drums when I was about 10 years old, or I guess 11, I'm sorry. Um, so I've been playing for the better part of a decade. And uh, I grew up in Beaverton, Oregon, just playing drums for bands. And then uh, I was 19 years old when uh, Billy put out his sort of cattle call for uh, just anybody who wanted to audition for the band when Jimmy left. And uh, I put a video in, and about a week and a half later, I was working with him, and I've been the drummer for the band since early 2010. So it's been almost three years that I've been playing with the Pumpkins. I guess I started, I started really getting into like drummers, drummers when I was like 15 or 16. Like I got into like Terry Anguli and you know Vinnie Caliuti and stuff like that. Just guys who played a lot of ghost notes and sort of weird like hand over foot stuff. Like I'm really into uh, really, really into the way that Tarion kind of plays like that ridiculous flowy style where he can run like double strokes and paradiddles all the way across his hands and feet in like this ridiculous fluid way. But um, so when I was when I was about that age, I started to try and kind of adapt that style. And it was uh, about a year before that I really started getting into obviously like uh, Jimmy Chamberlain's playing and he had a very similar style, but it was like obviously the extremely powerful like Elvin Jones kind of vibe where he could flam all over the place and it felt absolutely flawless like he never missed a beat so um, you know I spent I spent like the next four or five years really tr kind of trying to solidify that sort of style and then figure out where to take it in my own direction and then sort of ironically enough about four years after I really started delving into that was when I ended up getting this gig and it's sort of even almost taken that to another direct like sorry uh, to another level because you know I've been forced to sort of reverse engineer how it is you can play with a band that is made up of such like muscular guitars and stuff it's it's weird it's been super cool it's it's really hard to sort of like you know it's because it's like obviously his Jimmy's style is such a is such an insanely uh, unique style it's really hard to put your your own sort of stamp on something that's already like a completely different animal altogether, you know? So it's like, it's it's more trying to find this balance of almost backing it off a little bit to where like, you know, cause I mean, uh, there's, there's some of the unbelievable like blistering stick stuff that like is still completely enamoring to me, but like, you know, I'm, tr I'm trying to sort of meet it in the middle with sort of like the John Bonham groove type playing and it's been it's been working out cool. Like the new the new material that we've been playing has sort of benefited from the fact that we can sort of push it in like a groove shoegaze direction as opposed to like sort of the more the more metal direction that it kind of started in. So I I do play in a band back in uh, Beaverton. It's called Bear Cubbin, and we're sort of a uh, we're basically dedicated to ripping off all of Battles and Tortoises tricks. Basically, I'm I'm like stealing everything John Stanier ever did. So, um, but it's, 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 sort of, it's sort of just like a loop riff kind of band, and if you want to, you should totally check it out because we were having a lot of fun doing it. You know, it was probably when I was about 14 years old. Like, I, I went through, like, just this big phase of, like, trying to play, like, literally every kind of stick I could find, you know? Like, I played, like, the Danny Carries, and I played, like, all these signature models and stuff. And then, at some point, I ended up getting taught by a guy who was, like, just absolutely, like, he thought he thought that the Vader 5As were, like, the coolest, most balanced stick ever. I ended up sort of, uh, like, first time I picked them up, it's like they're this perfect balance of, like, they're a little shorter so I can keep everything sort of tighter into my body, but they've got a really nice balanced fulcrum, and they never feel too heavy, but I can still get a lot of power out of them, and it's like, versus, like, any other 5A I've ever played, it just feels like nothing in my hand at all. So it's like, I mean, I, I've tried a billion things and I keep coming back to it. As far as advice I have for people, sort of my age that want to do this kind of thing. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah, I don't know, just work really hard, I guess, because, I mean, I, I guess one of my favorite quotes about, about uh, this sort of thing is like, basically like opportunity is where preparedness meets like complete, like, or meets like a complete fluke, you know? So it's like, 
you know, if you're if you're not ready for the opportunity when it comes, then you know, I like to do rudiments between uh, my hands and feet. Like I'll do like Swiss triplets between my right hand, right foot, left hand, right foot, right hand, left foot, etc. Like paradiddles, that kind of stuff. So it'll kind of wake up my wake up my muscles down here, and then. Uh, I do a lot of flam fives just all over the place, like flam all over the kit. Um, and then like I mean just your standard eight on a hand kind of stuff before a show. I mean it's it's nothing novel. <laughs> I would say probably the goofiest thing that I've seen from the stage, we were in Oh my gosh. We were in like uh we were in somewhere in Australia on the last run and there was a uh, very large gentleman who uh, got on his got on his friend's shoulders like totally shirtless and we're like oh man huh, that's funny that's totally fun he goes back into the crowd and we're like oh man that guy and then he comes back up and like I'm not really you know I'm not really expecting anything and I'm like oh look there's shirtless there's shirtless dude again and then Jeff our guitar player comes over to me he's like shaking his head like no dude look again and this dude is like completely just in the buff except for like socks and sandals like flailing around above the crowd it was it was it was it was a bit of a because we're trying to look all crazy and rock and roll you know like the lights are all dark and we're like playing zero or something so it's all it's supposed to be all metal and then we're all like busting up because there's just like a giant naked whale dude like floating around on the crowd it was it was a bit much <laughs> If I had to talk about like the craziest, craziest, like actual, like cool moment, like I can't believe I'm here. We played uh, the Sunset Strip Festival uh, last year, and uh, it was like 30,000 some odd people out there. I had my parents like at the soundboard, which is raised so I can like see my mom up there, and she's just like, you know, like, and uh, you know, it was like we're halfway through the set, and I realize I'm like I'm looking at like the rainbow and like the Viper Room, like staring down the Sunset Strip, like where rock and roll kind of happened in LA, and it's like, you know, you realize and you're like, you know, you're you're up there with like all of rock and roll's weird ghosts and stuff. It was it was a bizarre experience because it almost felt like we were kind of channeling that whole energy, you know. So I mean, that was pretty cool. Thanks for checking this out. This has been uh, Mike Byrne from Smashing Pumpkins. Check out Vader Sticks, because they're boss.